there's still some people here. I thought this was going to end at six, but uh, clearly you guys are really excited about what's happening here. So I'm going to be talking about you and me as citizens of the cyborg society. I'm a cyborg anthropologist, and uh, when I tell people about that, they ask, uh, first they ask, what is a cyborg? And um, do you think you're cyborgs? OK, who thinks that they're cyborgs? Right, I think that already if you have a mobile phone, you're augmenting yourself. And uh, if you're wearing uh, glasses, you're augmenting yourself. Who now thinks that they're cyborgs? All right, OK. And uh, then people ask me, what's anthropology? And anthropology is something that I take uh, items from uh, some other times, and I look at the items, and I try to understand how did these items affect society. Like if you would take a wheel, and then you would try to figure out what do people do with wheels, and uh, you need a wheel to be a taxi driver. So I would study, OK, how would the taxi drivers then use the wheel to earn their food? So I'm trying to take uh, items and figure out how the society works around those items. And I do that in the future in the cyborg societies. So my cyborg societies are great societies to live in, because I've gotten to decide myself what I would like them to be because there's nobody to tell me anything else. So my cyborg societies are democratic, equal societies, where people are able to pursue their happiness. And they're able to augment themselves to whatever they need more. You know, I could maybe attach to your brain and uh, get your capabilities or to some robot's pl uh, brain. So my cyborg society idea is not like most of the Hollywood movies. It's more of an utopia. So I'm going to take you into this path how to study the cyborg societies. So you need to go underneath the society and figure out how it actually works. And the cyborg society is all about data. All the interconnected relations of data that comes from robots, from the humans, from IoT, from AI, all those streams of data. And when those streams of data connect and interconnect, they make out the rules of the society, what we nowadays think of laws and standards and regulations. Those are the laws and norms and regulations of the future. OK, so let's go into doing what anthropologists do. So I picked three, four artifacts. And these are artifacts that we already have today in our society. But they're going to be really meaningful artifacts in the future in the cyborg society. Four different artifacts. So my first artifact, and you have to remember that these are data artifacts. They have to do with data, because data is what runs the society in the future. So the first one is about peer bosses and peer government. The second one is uh, transparency for safety and sustainability. And the third one is your ID and letting data work for you. And the fourth one is using social media as a crystal ball. So let's study these four different artifacts. The first one, peer bosses, is all about DAOs. These are uh, decentralized autonomous organizations. And maybe if you are in the blockchain and Bitcoin, you've heard about the DAOs and, and uh, uh, examples of them, how they didn't work. But actually, there are quite many examples nowadays of the ones that do work. I don't know if you have been to Steam IO. So that basically is a DAO. It's tokenized. And uh, it's basically uh, like a newspaper. And anybody can go and write articles there.
But unlike Facebook, where you go and write something and you don't get paid, at Steam.io, you actually get paid. And you can vote on the rules of the, the newspaper, on the journal. So you are your own boss with your peers. And you get money from working on the internet. So that's our first artifact. And the same thing could also work for the government. We could all govern ourselves as a country or within or outside of groups of countries. Come up with the laws and regulations and how we would like us to be governed. The second artifact is about sustainability and safety. And this is about blockchain making data transparent for us. So you can make all the data that is really important for our sustainability to be transparent, and that will affect our behaviors. So what if we knew exactly where the food that you ate today for lunch? What did you guys have for lunch? Maybe some fish. Did you know that if the fish was sustainable fish? Not really sure. So what if we could know that this fish, you know, there would be some QR code, and with my mobile phone, I could check where did this fish come from? Is it sustainable? If all that was transparent, that would affect how we would organize and what our behaviors would be, right? Our third uh, artifact is new assets for you. Because I believe that I have a birthright to my data. I believe that uh, what data I create, what data streams I create, I should be able to decide what to do with them. If I want to give my data stream to research for free, or if I maybe want to sell it to somebody. I looked into this even in today's world, and uh, if I had some uh, disease that would be interesting to be researched, I could actually sell my data for about $1,000 a month. That would be a really nice universal basic income, right? So I, I truly believe that uh, data is my own data, and I get to make decisions. So my data is really a possibility, and I, I really like my data because it's a Finnish concept. There are similar concepts in other countries, but I, th I think it's really important to start thinking about what are we going to do with the most important asset that there is in the future. Okay, then the fourth artifact is uh, uh, da data science for governance. Right now, the government is in a bit of a pickle because when they are looking at research, ordinary research from researchers, scientists, it often is that scientists are, uh, have to be quite vague on, of, let's say, on climate change. It's not really clear what is happening when. And in that sort of a situation, it's really, really difficult for politicians to make decisions because they don't want to look like fools if they make the wrong decision, right? But there are many other ways to come up with the data to know what's actually happening. And one good way is just to follow our social media. So you can do data science on our social, social media data and actually figure out when people, when there's a conflict coming up or when there's migration or other stuff happening because of the climate change or something else. And it's so much faster to make decisions on that and so much, so, so much less embarrassing for the politicians because you actually have the knowledge that it's happening now. So those are the four artifacts that are actually going to make a difference when we get to the cyborg society. They will look different at that point, but we already have these artifacts here. So you get to choose what are the artifacts that you want to embrace. What are the artifacts that we now have that you would like to have more of in the future? 
So it actually is your future, I believe. So I have taken it upon me to do little things here and there for people to see more clear how these little pilots that we do here and there are actually going to make a difference in the future. So if you're here in Finland on December 12th, I have a little hackathon where we're going to have biohackers and uh, my data people and blockchain people, and we're trying to recreate wellness and health. So if you happen to be here, 12-12 at 12 o'clock, it's at the Aalto University in Helsinki. So welcome all. That concludes my bit, but um, I would like to ask you guys before I go, how many of you would really like to impact the future and come up with a better future? I think that's why you are here. So uh, I, I really think if you are at Slush, you do want to impact your future. And uh, how many of you have taken upon yourself to do something about it? I want to see. Okay, that's a good start. That's a very good start. Thank you for that.